Alright guys, welcome back to another week. Alright, Kayon here from Alpha Play Chief Currency Strategies. Welcome to the new week for October 2016. Alright, so let's take a look as to what is going to happen in the market for this week itself. Alright, this... Um, this is under Forex Factory calendar tab. So we see that uh, Monday is pretty quiet, alright. Uh, not much of a high impact news, alright. Though we have um, pound manufacturing PMI as well as the dollar ISM manufacturing PMI. But the focus wouldn't be on, on these two data itself, right? So the first key important data to take note of for next week would be on Aussie RBA rate statement coming in on Tuesday. The cash rate is expected to remain the same uh, from the summary of last rate statement all right, from RBA itself. The tone is pretty neutral to a slight, slightly bullish. So what we are expecting for this report is that uh, highly unlikely there will be any changes. So um, you know, if the overall tone remains neutral or towards the slightly bullish side, we might see more strength coming in for the Australian dollar. Right. Um, um. Of course, that day itself in the morning, we do have RBNZ government spe uh, villa speaking as well. Um, and later part of the day, we have GDT price index. All right, this will be key for the Kiwi dollar. Moving forward into Wednesday, we do have some retail sales from Aussie. Uh, not gonna be market moving, right? But uh, just keep an eye on it because that's the first key data coming in after the RBA rate statement. In the later part of it, all right, we do have important data coming for UK um, under the services PMI. Expectation is slightly lower than the previous, uh, but over here, as long as it remains around 52, we do not see much movement in the pound. All right, but if this data services PMI come in below 50, we might see a heavy sell-off in the pound. Right, and of course, if it comes in about 54 to and above, all right, we might see strength uh, coming in for the UK itself. Right, um, in terms of that, then the next key focus will be, of course, on Friday, your NFP, non-farm payroll together with the US average hourly earnings, all right. Uh, for those who have been following us sometime, we have been saying this many, many times, the US is already experiencing full employment data. Right, so the key focus right now is more towards the inflation side for the dollar. Right, so of course, average hourly earnings is of more importance as compared to the NFP data itself. But having said that, you know, if it's there's a miss in the non farm payroll and if it's a huge miss, we might see more sell off um, on the dollar, right, following from last week. So, uh, average hourly earning expected to come in slightly better 0 0.2 versus the previous data of 0 0.1. So, anything below 0 0.2, we might see the sell off and the dollar itself. So, let's go on um, to this weekly report that we prepared every week, all right? So, I'll include a link for you to assess this report. Um, and of course, if you are subscribed under our mailing list, you do receive this on a weekly basis as well. Right, so what is going to cover in this report is basically a summary of the last week events, uh, some of the key events um, focused for the week itself. And this week, of course, the focus will be Aussie, Kiwi, British Pound, as well as the US dollar, as mentioned earlier. Right, and of course, um, we do include technical outlook uh, for the overall market, including the equities market, S&P, DAX, Hang Seng, as well as the Nikkei, as well as uh, commodities market being the gold, silver, and oil. Right, and of course, the broad currency outlook as well on the daily time frame. So these are uh, outlooks um, that is on the on the medium to higher time frame, uh, mainly on the daily perspective. All right. So having said that, um, this kind of weekly video, uh, I would like to include in perhaps some of a shorter time frame, mainly on the H four, to share with you some of the potential outlooks and and potential trades that you can take for the week itself. All right. So the first one I want to share with you is um. Euro dollar. So over here, if you look at this H4 time frame chart, you are looking at um, price is currently in a very wide cons consolidation ranging environment. All right. So when price is in a range environment, what we adopt is um, the advanced price pattern strategy. All right. Heavily reliant on Fibonacci to to actually spot for potential setups. All right. And over here, what we are seeing is we do have a potential pattern. Right. Um. Let me just pull in the right two. All right. We are good to go. Okay. So what we see is price made a down move. All right. It did a retracement touching the sixty one point eight Fibonacci area, and then it bounces off, and then right now it's rallying up further as well. 
Alright, so what we are seeing is that we do have a potential godly pattern forming at the 127 completion area. Alright, so for those who are following us sometime, you know that we trade the Gartley slightly different. Alright, so we like to trade the extension of 127 Fibonacci extension. Okay, so uh, it's a pretty deep one. Uh, the good thing over here is because of this deep retracement, our stops will be very tight and that gives us a very good risk to reward ratio. Alright, and if I simply drop in a horizontal line, around the completion you can see that there are some structural level in the past as well of course and this your x leg acting as some form of resistance as well right so what we are waiting and expecting uh, expecting is for price to go higher towards the 1.1325 region and we'll be looking for a short opportunity at the top of the range itself over in pound dollar all right we do have a very similar setup with uh, euro dollar as well all right uh what we are seeing over here is after that huge drop uh price is currently still in in this little small range and since it's in the small range we did identify that there's another potential pattern happening as well all right with this impulse leg we did see a retracement towards the 61.8 and that's a potential godly formation as well all right very similar to the euro dollar setup that i just shared earlier with you all right, so again, we are trading on the completion of 127. All right, if I drop in a horizontal line at the completion area, we do see some minor structure, right? In the past, support, turn resistance, come support, and then now acting as a resistance, all right? Not too bad a level to look for a short opportunity. All right, but of course, we need to be patient for price to rally up towards this region before we have the opportunity to short this market. Right, so the next one I want to share with you. Um, okay, before I go on to the next pair, um, to add in more educational purpose other than you know just sharing your potential setup is that there are many many setups for this coming week itself. All right, close to twenty over setups, but I won't be sharing with you all of it. But I will share with you the technique of how you can handle situation when you have many setups that are correlated. Right, so one of the important key factor here is you realize that pound dollar and euro dollar both have a sell setup all right and if you are trading these two pairs you need to be very aware that you are exposed to time on the dollar right basically because if you are selling euro dollar and you are selling pound dollar you are buying dollar two times right so you need to be very aware of the risk uh, exposure that you have for each individual currency pairs right so how you deal with this situation is that if you have uh, you know, for example, in this case, you have sell dollar, uh, sell euro dollar, and sell pound dollar. You might just want to pick one instead of going for both. All right, and of course, if you want to go for both, you might want to decide to reduce your risk, uh, for for each particular trade itself. All right, so I'll move on. Um, we have another setup on dollar yen as well. All right, which is very similar again. All right, what we are seeing is that over here, uh. We have uh, overall, you know, if you look at the higher time frame, it's in the downtrend. Uh, but right now, we are we are still in uh, consolidation over here because price hasn't break the previous low. But overall, right now, if you just look at this time frame, it's in a downtrend. All right, and if you start to pull in Fibonacci too, all right, we do see that price comes in at sixty one point eight as well. So again, we have another godly pattern formation. All right, uh, completion is at the one two seven. So uh, it's not the most nice looking pattern, right? But ratio wise, it's still valid, right? And if I just drop in a horizontal line at the completion level, uh, we do see some structural level in the past as well, all right? Support broken, turn resistance, resistance, resistance turns uh, broken, all right? And after that, now it might form another resistance area. All right, so the key level to watch for UJ will be at 102.30 region. Of course, price must go higher before we have the opportunity to sell on this pair itself. All right, the next major pair is on dollar Canadian. All right, this one, uh, you realize that uh, we do have conflicting in terms of direction for the dollar itself. All right, we are selling euro dollar, selling euro uh, pound dollar, but we are buying dollar yen. 
All right, so this is something you need to take note because uh, in this video, what we are sharing with you is mainly on the technical setups, right? Uh, if you're trading on fundamental and sentiment, you need to couple them to, to get a higher probability kind of trades, all right? And of course, those factors help you to filter off trades that you might not want to take as well. All right, so for dollar cat, uh, what we see is that overall is an uh, uptrend, right? It's not a very decent um, and, and clear uptrend, but it is inching higher. All right, and if you start to put in Fibonacci for the major swings, right, we see that this retracement comes in pretty deep towards the one uh zero zero point seven eight retracement, and that gives us a potential butterfly pattern, and of course this is a bullish one. All right, so we are looking to buy the dollar, sell the Canadian. Should price drops uh, lower, all right, back towards the one point two nine twenty five area. All right, so let's look left to see if there's any structure. Uh, I did. It's not, it's not the most ideal form of structure. We do have a very minor one, all right? uh, not the obvious and the strong structural level. Um, so again, you need to decide whether this kind of setup fits into your into your trading plan. All right? Because what we are doing over here is we are just simply sharing with you our insights and the potential setup. All right, uh, it's not advisable for you to just follow blindly and take all the trades. All right? Use this as an educational kind of series educational kind of video to aid you in your learning all right so um before i go on to the next few components all right i want to share with you that on yen we do have a lot of similar setup all right mainly um selling the the yen pass itself all right so starting from euro yen pound yen aussie yen kiwi yen canadian yen uh we all have a very similar setup all right, and again, if you look at yen recently, it's all on the downtrend. So what we identified is we do have potential pattern. All right, uh, of course, this is aligned with the overall trend as well. It's a bearish bad pattern. All right, let me draw in my fib. Uh, bring it up the 88.6. Uh, and this pattern completes at the 88.6 Fibonacci level. All right, so this is on Euro Yen. Right, uh, we are looking at a bearish bet. So the completion is only happening if price rally up towards the one one five point sixty, and we'll be looking for a short opportunity. All right, uh, not too bad because we do have some form of structural resistance at the top over here. All right, what I mean by all of the yen pairs are looking very similar. I'll be going through the process faster. We are seeing another similar bad pattern all right uh, setting up on the pound yen as well uh, this time around though it retraced like uh, it's, a, it's a shallow retracement but it hits the minimum requirement of 38.2 we do have a bad pattern to sell this as well all right completion at the 88.6 uh, again if you go on you know all the yen pairs you realize that we do have very similar setup all right you see this swing the retracement comes in around 38.2 to 50 all right and we we do have a, a, a bad pattern as well all right so this looks like this all right and again on kiwi we do have that as well if i pull in my fit all right you can see this retracement comes in towards the 50 percent and we do have a bad pattern All right, uh, and of course the last one Canadian yen, uh, we do have similar setups as well. If I start to put in my fit, I'll use the high one. Sorry. All right, and you can see the the retracement comes in at fifty, bounces off, and we are looking for the eighty eight point six. So again. If you're facing with this kind of situation, there are two ways you can do it. One is you do not take all the pairs, all the setups that you identified. Take the higher probability one. And how you do it, you need you can couple with fundamentals, you can couple with sentiments, all right? And that gives you a kind of directional bias, some form of confirmation in terms of which particular currency pair you want to trade. The other way is, of course, to reduce your exposure, reduce your risks that you take per trade in order to balance the overall uh, exposure for yen itself. All right, and to keep this video within the time, I would like to share with you the last setup, which is on Euro Pound. All right, let me bring up my Euro Pound. This would be a bullish setup, all right, because 
recent trend has been higher, right? Has been going higher, inching higher and higher. Uh, we do want to trade according to the overall trend. So we pull in the latest swing and we put in our Fibonacci. You can see the retracement is deep. It comes in at 786. Right, that gives us a valid butterfly pattern, right? And it looks something like this. So we are looking for price to drop back towards the 127 extension around the 0 0.8515. And of course, this confluence with a pretty decent structure, right? Support broken, turn resistance broken, and now come back. It might form the support required to push price high, right? So we are looking for a buy opportunity over here. So that's it for this week, all right? Many, many setups to look out for going into, into the, the new week in October itself. But the key over here is, again, not to take all the trades. Use it as an educational video, educational series. Ask us if you have any kind of questions or you'd like us to discuss any topics all right, regarding trading. Drop your comments below. Like this video, subscribe, share with your friends. You know, Hopefully, this kind of videos will be able to benefit you in your trading. All right, with that, I'll talk to you in the next video. And trade according to your plan, manage your risk. I'll talk to you soon.